Buenos Dias, students. Today, we're going to continue learning about how to solve equations, but this time there's going to be two steps instead of just one. Um, so these problems will look very similar to when um, we were going over the steps to solve an equation. So if you want to take a moment, we're actually going to do three examples together. You can see the first two right here. Um, there will be a third, but if you want to take a moment to pause and kind of set up what you see on the screen. Okay, so two-step equations, just like all the other kinds of equations, um, we're going to still follow the same three-step process. And then we are also going to make sure we label the pose as we go. So here we go. This is number one. Um, so we have 4x plus 10 is equal to 50. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at if I need to combine any like terms. The answer is no, I do not need to combine any like terms. So since everything is all good, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my constant. My constant is 10. It is being added. So since I'm adding, I'm going to use the inverse operation. I'm going to subtract 10 or the ESPO property, and I'm going to label it over here in order to solve uh, or further solve the equation. So I will have 4x, 10 minus 10 is just going to be zero. Anything plus zero or subtracted from zero is just itself. Um, and that's going to be equivalent to whatever 50 minus 10 is, which is 40. So now that I have gotten rid of my constant, all I have left is my coefficient or the BFF that I'm going to get rid of. With this is saying four times something makes 40. So I can use the division property of equality or depot in order to solve for X. So four divided by four is just going to be one whole. One X, remember one X is just equal to X. Like that means the same thing. Okay. Um. So uh, four divided by four would just be one X or X is going to be equivalent to whatever 40 divided by four is, which is 10. So X is going to be equivalent to 10. And I know some of you may have been able to pick that up without writing the depot property. It's important that you write it down because in this instance, yes, most of us could probably do that one in our head. We know that four times 10 makes 40, but it's good to practice it for in the future if it's not so obvious and you do have to actually go and potentially do like long division or something in order to figure it out. Um, we can always check our work if we go back and plug in 10. So four times 10 plus 10. That is equivalent to 50, and that is, yes, that's true. Four times 10, if we follow the order of operations, four times 10 is 40, plus 10 would be 50. Okay, let's try two more. So if you want to take a moment to pause and write down the last two problems, or if you already wrote the first one down, you can go ahead and write the third one. Okay, so let's talk about the second one, number two. Over here, we have negative 3x plus 1 equals 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is look and see if I can combine any like terms. I can't. So I am going to now look at my constant. My constant is being added. So I am going to use the subtraction property of equality in order to solve. So I am going to be left with negative 3x. 1 minus 1 is just going to be 0, is equivalent to 9, because 10 minus 1 is 9. Um, and now I don't have any more constants I need to get rid of. So I'm going to get rid of the coefficient and I'm figuring out what times negative three makes positive nine. So I can use the division property of equality or depot in order to solve. So um, I have negative three divided by negative three is just going to be one whole. So X is equivalent to whatever nine divided by negative three is. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and since one of them is positive and one of them is negative, I'm going to use my integer rules. A, a positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative, so the answer is x is equivalent to negative 3. And if I was to go back and check, negative 3 times negative 3 plus 1, we're checking to see if that is equivalent to 10. If we follow our order, order of operations, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 plus 1 does equal 10. So this is always a surefire way to go back and check your answers. If you go back and plug it in and you get what the solution is supposed to be, then you know you solved it right. So this is an example of using ESPO then DEPO again, but now we have to kind of consider our integer rules. Okay, let's look at the last problem, which is um, we're actually going to use a, a different property of equality that we haven't used yet. So on number three, we have A divided by two plus 10 equals 112. So I'm looking, I do not see any like terms that I have to combine. 
So I'm going to now get rid of the constant. The constant is being added. So I'm going to use the subtraction property of equality or ESPO in order to solve. So we're going to subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. So I'm left with A over 2 is equivalent to 112 minus 10 is going to be 102. Okay. And now at this point, our coefficient there's not really a coefficient, right? Or the coefficient is just going to be one because like one A is the same as just A, how, just how we talked about up top, one X is the same as X. So if we look at what this is saying mathematically, this is saying something divided by two equals 102. So if I'm trying to figure out what divided by two makes 102, I can multiply two times 102 in order to solve for A. I'm going to use the inverse operation of multiplication, which means that I'm going to use the MPO property, the multiplication property of equality. So if I want to multiply 102 times 2 in order to figure out what A is, to represent it on the other side of the equation, I'm going to write it over here. And what you'll see happen is if I set this up like a fraction multiplication problem, 2 over 1, because that's how we can rewrite 2, times A over 2, this can be uh, simplified as 2a over 2. 2 times a would be 2a. 1 times 2 would be 2. This situation kind of looks like up here when we use the depot property, right? Anything divided by itself is just going to be 1. 1a 1 is equivalent to a. So this is kind of showing you a broken down version of why the multiplication property of equality works over here and why when I multiply a over two times two, this all simplifies to just a by itself. So a is going to be equivalent to whatever 102 times two is, which is 204. So by using the subtraction property, then the multiplication property, we were able to figure this out. If I wanted to check my work, 204 divided by two, I can check to see if that makes 102, and it does. Two goes into 20, 10 times. Two goes into four, two times combined, that makes 102. So it's always important to make sure you identify the three steps, combine your like terms, get rid of your constant, get rid of your coefficient, go back and check your answer in the original equation to see if you get the solution. And do not forget to label your pose as you go in order to be able to justify your steps as you work. In the next video, we're going to see what I like to call some weird equations. So before we move on to that lesson, um, here are your practice questions questions for today. There are three two-step equations you need to solve. So you have 3x minus 6 equals 5. You have negative 4x minus 1 equals negative 13. That is a negative sign right there. Um, and then you have x divided by 2 plus 12 equals positive 24. Um, I meant to just write 24, but I in my head I was thinking a negative, so that's why it has parentheses and a plus sign, but it's just positive 24. So you don't need to write the plus sign and the parentheses. Um, so make sure you are looking at what is happening and you're using the correct property of equality, use the inverse operation. So in all the examples that we did on the previous page, we had to use the subtraction property of equality to start. You'll notice in these cases, you might have to use the, or you will have to use the addition property of equality because that is the inverse operation to subtraction. So try these out. Check your answer in the table of contents. Feel free to ask your teacher any questions and talk to you soon. Bye.